Good morning, folks. I'm in my uh, military museum, and this is my D-Day display. And uh, this all happened June 6, 1944, on Omaha and Utah Beach. That's where the Americans uh, came off the landing craft. Unfortunately, uh, we lost in the first 24 hours, we lost 4,400 American young soldiers. And uh, today, we honor them. Today is D-Day, June 6, 80 years later. Okay, so let me uh, show you my displays here. Uh, on this side, it's uh, Omaha Beach, and on this side, it's Utah Beach. This is the way the beaches would have looked about one day after D-Day, June 7, 1944. You don't get any more realistic than what I have here. Here's the medic over here with the medic bags. This is a small medic uh, display over here, and uh, this is uh, morphine. See that? This is some of the stuff they did. This is real morphine. There's a needle in here, and uh, the medic would come up to the soldier and put this in his arm, left or right side, and it would paralyze your left or right side within three minutes. Okay, let's go down the aisle. Let me show you what we got here. Okay, over here, this is a uh, light that would have signaled the ships to send more landing craft to Omaha or Utah Beach. Not only do I have the light, but I have the original generator that runs the light. This is a 1919 3006 Browning machine gun, and uh, I have a total of 36 of them right now. This is an M1 car beam. Even these sandbags are World War II. There's the original stretchers that they used. Uh, we'll go down the aisle over here. Uh, this is the way the guys came off the landing craft. Okay, see the patch over here? Uh, this here is a gas patch. These are very, very hard to get. Uh, these would turn blue, like my jeans, if there's agents in the air. Luckily, the Germans didn't use any chemical or biological weapons on the Americans or the Allies on D-Day. If they did, uh, this would turn blue, and the soldiers would be carrying their M5 gas masks. This is an M5 gas mask. I only have two of these. These are super rare. The rubber waterproof gas mask that was issued to all the GIs coming off the landing craft on Omaha and Utah Beach. Luckily, they didn't have to use it. Okay, over here, this is an M1 Brent 3006 caliber. See, normally they had either a 16 inch uh, bayonet, uh, then in 1943, they come down to 10 inches. Okay, so that's the M1 Grant. Okay, this is an M1 Grant, and this is the uh, grenade launcher. See that? This is the adapter that holds the grenade launcher. And that, this rocket here is activated with a blank. This would go probably about two to 300 yards. It would hit the ground. That piece of wood would fall out of that uh, clip there, and uh, it would go off. Okay, they'd also have these uh, hand grenades here, the pineapple grenades. Here, dated January 1943. Everything I'm showing you is the real deal. Okay, the, the grenades would be in these canisters, you know, for shipping. And of course, it's got the original grenade in there. See that? And that's what the men uh, used on uh, the beaches against the Germans. Okay, they also used armor-piercing bullets. See, black tip, armor-piercing. These will go through easy, a quarter inch of steel. Okay, then over here you got the ball ammunition, just the everyday ball ammunition. Okay, then over here, you got the red tip ammunition, that's a tracer, so at night they could see where the, uh, the bullets are traveling. Okay, they also had M1 car beams. This is an M1 car beam. See that? And uh, it shoots a 30 caliber bullet, very easy to use, semi-automatic, and uh, that's the bayonet that goes on it. So that's what they used uh, when they came off the beaches. Uh, the landing craft. Unfortunately, the Germans were way ahead of everybody. The Germans had the uh, MG-42 and the MG-34. Uh, compared to these guns here, uh, they were way ahead of uh, everybody. Okay, so uh, follow me down the line here. Let me show you a little bit here. Uh, this is the uh, shipping crate that the 50 caliber bullets were shipped in, the original crate. Here's some more M1 carbines. There's another 1919 machine gun. Okay, we got the walkie-talkies in here. This is a machine gun uh, bunker with the 50 caliber M2. I have a total of 16 of them. And that's the way the ammunition was belted. See, there's a whole box of uh, grenades over there. Okay, you come over here. This is uh, another uh, machine gun bunker. 
And this is another light uh, that the Navy used to signal the ships uh, to bring more landing craft. Uh, that soldier over there, that's called the grease gun, 45 caliber grease gun. And look, here's the ammunition box and the dynamite. Here, the dynamite, dated. Let me show you. Let's see. Dated 1942. Look at that. Dated 1942. This is the real deal. And in this wooden box, this is the way the uh, dynamite would have been shipped overseas. Okay, this searchlight, all, oh, it definitely has the original uh, generator with it. And that works. I had this working last year. Here's another M250 caliber machine gun. And this is some spare barrels to interchange with the uh, machine gun. Over here, this is original embalming fluid. U.S. Army embalming fluid. And over here is another medic display. And you walk down here, we got a couple of uh, GIs over there. They're wounded. Uh, they're getting patched up. Uh, this here is the, uh, the switchboard that would have been in the headquarters machine gun bunker or foxhole. And this is the 6-volt manual generator that runs all the radios and walkie-talkies around the area. Uh, they don't want to use a gas generator because it makes noise and the enemy would know where they are. So uh, this here, all this soldier has to do is crank that arm about that RPM and it will put out enough juice to, uh, to run these radios. Okay, over here we got the original porta potty You won't see that in a lot of museums. Uh, I go right down to the toilet paper. Okay, look at this. Army use only. The original toilet paper. Isn't that something? Okay, Army issued soap made out of horse fat. This is the original soap that they were issued to wash, wash up with. Okay, over here we have a bazooka uh, bunker over here. And these are all the 50 caliber original uh, cans that would have held uh, 50 caliber bullets. And they used the thinner ones for 30 caliber bullets. Okay, you come over here. All the cooking equipment. Yeah, take a look at this display. Take a look at these uh, pots over here. They're dated 1943-1944. Uh, you don't get more realistic than what I set up here. We even have the camel cigarettes that they smoked back then. Okay, guys. Well, today's D-Day. We'll be honoring the soldiers. And in my book, every soldier that hit the beach over there should have got the Medal of Honor. Come see my museum. You'll learn a lot. 719-683-2200. We're open Wednesday 10 o'clock, Friday 10 o'clock, and Sunday 10 o'clock for only one tour each day. So uh, any questions, give me a call. Maybe I'll see you this summer. Have a great day.